How's it going everybody, Driver53 here, and today we are going to be taking another look at if tire selection matters for Farming Simulator 22. We did a part one video a couple weeks ago taking a look at 13 different tire configurations for the trailer boards on this Case Magnum 440 right here. And what we did was looked at them on a dirt hill and on a dirt flat down there on the bottom. And then in part two, we came back and looked at what happens if you add a weight. And we looked at the total weight of all the different configurations. And in this test here, as you can see, we've done a lot of different painting and also we've worked the field a little bit. We have a harvested state, a plowed state, a cultivated state, and even a seeded state here that we did the exact same test on. So I ran all of these tests with a weight on the front and then I took them off and I ran all the tests again without a weight. And then I ran another group of tests here on the flat, the exact same textures or work states to the ground, the exact same tractor and the tires that I ran on the hill here behind me, but it's pulling an auger wagon instead of a piece of equipment because I wanted to do it more of a test as if you're actually uh, hauling your grain off to a your farm, your silo or to a sell point. Every one of these tractors traveled the exact same distance. I had a starting gate right here. And whenever I hit the cruise control, they all went. And whenever they hit the fence up there, that's when I stopped the timer. To save a little bit of time, I only ran four different configurations of tires. And I used this chart to be able to determine which ones of these that I wanted to be able to use for this test. This scatter chart on the right does a really good job of showing you in comparison to all the other ones, which ones were the fastest ones. So if you look at number three, that was going to be our wide tires. Number six, that is our duals front and rear. And number 11 is our tracks, but they're the three M. And I wanted to run these three because they're the fastest. It was going to take me the least amount of time. And I figured that these are ones that people are more than likely going to want to use on their um, farms, because as you can see, with a weight and without a weight, they performed better than the rest of them. On this chart, you can see that I had the BKT standard wide twin front and rear and the crawler track three M. I also ran each of these tire configurations on the hill without weight and on the hill with the weight. The first run that I did here was the dirt patch, the same as what we ran in both of our previous videos. I wanted to make sure that this was a good control and I got the same results. Now the times do look a little bit different because when I widened out the hill, I adjusted it just a little bit. It's the way that the slope tool works. I wasn't able to get it exactly the same. So the times are just a little bit different but whenever I did some extrapolation, they turned out to be the same as what they were before. And I went ahead and added another scatter chart here down at the bottom. As you can see on the right hand side, these are all the different uh, tire configurations that we had and the test that we were running and the color that corresponds to that test. And you can see that the twins all the way around without the weight was the absolute best that we had, followed closely behind by the twins all around with a weight. The next line on the chart here is the gravel run. So this is the painted gravel that you can use from the landscaping tool. And the times are pretty comparable except for the crawler track without the weight. As you can see here in column number two, it jumped up to sixth place instead of ninth place. The next row here is grass. So how I made this, I used the landscaping tool. I put down the grass texture and then I uh, put down plants on top of that. So it'd simulate like you're actually out in a meadow. The times once again were very similar to what they were on the other two textures. Nothing really uh, shifted around here a whole lot. The fourth row here, I used concrete. And once again, you can see that the crawler track without the weight slowed down quite a bit. It was actually almost the exact same as what it was on the dirt. The fifth row here is the last of our paintable textures that I used with animal mud. And as you can see, the times were almost the same as what they were on the concrete in the dirt. The next row here is harvested. And what I did is I planted soybeans, then ran the combine after it. I didn't do any mulching or anything like that. So it's just the stubble sticking up. And as you can see, the times really started to slow down, except for a couple of them. And it was really interesting to see the crawler without a weight and the wide with the weight kind of stayed even to what they were from the previous tests. The next row here is one that a lot of you guys have been asking about plowed status. So yes, I ran a plow over it after I had harvested. So it's going to be the absolute most rough service that you can have here in Farming Simulator 22. As you can see, there were some very, very slow times on this. We had a 72, almost 73 second run and an 83 second run also. And you compare that to the fastest run was a 38.4. So over double the amount of time for one of these configurations compared to the other ones. And here's the scatter chart to show that. 
As you can see, the duels all the way around with and without a weight performed very good on this. Your Crawler Track 3M with a weight performed pretty good still, but the rest of them really started to slow down quite a bit. The next row here is another one that a lot of you guys were asking for. This is Cultivated, and as you can see on the scatter chart, the times did start to come down for some of the other ones that were really slow on plowing. When you actually get to the Cultivated state, they get faster again, but they're not as fast as they were on some of the other ones like a Harvested state. Um, the twins all the way around still performed very, very well though. And the last one here is going to be seated. I threw this one in because if you've got any rolling that you're going to need to do, I mean, we got a pretty big roller that takes a little bit of horsepower. And if you're on a hill, that could slow you down quite a bit. So I wanted to go and throw this in here. And the times for the seated field were almost identical to what they were as a harvested field. So after reviewing the data, there's really not a big difference in times whenever you're looking at all the paintable surfaces that you can have here in the game. But once you start getting over to the work status of your fields, that's when you're really going to start seeing a big dramatic difference in times. I still fully believe that twins all the way around is the best way to go if you've got hills and you've got some uh, bigger equipment and not so big tractors. Let's go ahead and take a look at our flat test here. So I've got the exact same tractors. We ran the same tires, the standard, the wides, the twin front and rear, and the crawler track 3M. The auger wagon has got 46,000 liters of sorghum in it right now, so it's pretty heavy. And we ran this test the exact same way. The front of our tractors were right in line with all of these gates right here. We hit the cruise control, and away they went. Once they hit the other fence down there at the other end, I stopped the timer. I'm going to go ahead and show you the first five rows here. Dirt, gravel, grass, concrete, and animal mud. These are all the ones that are paintable surfaces here using the landscape tool. And as you can see in the scatter chart down below, they're not that different on time. Now, this chart is a little bit different than the other one. The other one was showing about every half second as one of your grid lines. This one here, it's a tenth of a second for your grid lines. So as you can see down at the bottom, it's 19.8 all the way up to 20.4. So it's only about a second and a quarter difference over the entire length of this field for the different ones. And I know in my last video, I actually said that we were gonna use about 141, 146,000 liters of product in one of the really big augers. The problem with that was it wouldn't, I couldn't handle the vehicle. When I got above about 15, 17 miles an hour, the vehicle would just start swerving really, really bad. I couldn't get a straight line. So I didn't feel like those were accurate times because the vehicle was moving around too much and losing speed while it was doing it. So we dropped down to the 46,000 liters here in this auger and the vehicles were able to go in a straight line. For the most part, I did have to do a couple couple different input corrections on a couple of them. The plowing and the cultivating were the main ones. Um, but I don't feel like the times were affected maybe just a fraction, fraction of seconds here. Um, so I feel like this is really good data. The one thing that did surprise me the most is how close the grouping is there on the animal mud. So if you're going to make any of your own roads or anything like that, I mean, I would go ahead and throw the animal mud down because it looks like all the tires behave very, very similar to that. Now it may look really weird to have that but it's going to give you what appears to be the best overall grip for any tires that you're going to run on your vehicle. The next row here is going to be the harvested state. So once again, I ran the harvester over a soybean field, and then we did this testing. And as you can see, most of them came very, very, very close to each other. That's a lot of varies, but y'all, that is a lot of dots on top of each other. That's why I have the lines here. So you guys can see exactly where these are going. And Wow, it's it's incredible how many of those were almost the exact same time. We did have some of them come in with the exact same time. Row number seven here is the plowed status. And as you can see, it slowed down quite a bit. Now, to be fair, the top of this chart is only 23.1 seconds, while the bottom of it is 19.8. So that's only going to be a 3.3 second difference between the slowest and the fastest here on this chart. Row number eight is another very common texture that you're going to see when you're working your fields, and that is cultivated. As you can see, the times did come down compared to plowed, so that's good because they're not as rough. They've been smoothed out a little bit more. Last but not least, we had the seeded test, and the times were very comparable to what we ran in the harvested test. After looking at all the data here, I really don't think tire selection matters whenever you're running on paintable ground because there's not a really big difference. I mean, yeah, some of them were a little bit faster, but I mean, you're talking only a couple tenths of a second whenever you're looking at this distance here. But when you're working your fields, I feel like tire selection does matter. And once again, the twins all the way around, they are supreme with and without a weight. But I wouldn't overlook the Crawler Track 3M because, you know, on plowed status, one of the harshest 
uh, surface that we have. It came in third, so I don't think it's a bad one. Just the turning radius might be a little bit of an issue there, and we're going to take a look at that in our next video. So in conclusion, I think the tire selection is going to depend on what job you're doing on your farm. If you're going to be out in the field, you're working, you know, you've got a plowed status that you've got to get over or you've got cultivated, you know, the, the different work statuses like that. I really feel like you're going to need to have a more wide tire and as much traction as possible, right? So your wides all the way around your tracked versions, maybe. Um, those types of things right there with, without a weight, kind of depending if you've got a lot of hills or you don't have hills, you know, that's, that's your call. But if you're going to be running your tractor back and forth to the, um, silo, or you're going to be running it, you know, selling grains, think like that. I really don't think that it matters because the times were so close. So I think you get something like a standard tire, you know, it's going to be cheap and you just run that thing back and forth. Now, if you're barely going into the field, yeah, you're probably going to be all right. If you're going up hills, I don't think it's really going to matter that much. Um, as long as you're not in a cultivated or a plowed or a harvested state, I think you're going to be all right. So does tire selection matter? Yeah, but it depends on the job that you're doing. Well, that's going to be it for today's video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you would. If you want to be kept up to date on all my other testing videos that we're doing here on the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell too. And if you're looking for some other testing videos until my next one comes out, make sure you check out one of these right here. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53, signing off.